Good evening. So as chair of the board of the American Association of the Advancement of Science, it's my duty, an honor, and a pleasure to welcome you to this opening ceremony of the 176th annual meeting of the Associ American Association for the Advancement of Science. I am James McCarthy, currently the chair of the board. And before we begin with this evening's talks, I would like to note that members of the American Junior Academy of Sciences are in the audience. This academy is the only National Honor Society recognizing America's high school students for outstanding scientific research. The winners of statewide competitions are nominated to represent their states at the National AJAS Conference, which is held in conjunction with our annual meeting. And competition winners will present their posters tomorrow in Exhibit Hall B1. At this time, I'd like to ask those students to stand and be recognized. Where are you? Although we are the American Association for the Advancement of Science, this annual meeting is truly an international gathering. It includes exhibitors from around the world, attendees from 42 nations, and nearly half of our scientific sessions have speakers from outside the United States. And as regular attendees at the AAAS annual meetings have come to expect, the program also includes speakers who represent many of the world's most distinguished universities, colleges, and research institutions. So shortly, you'll be hearing from Dr. Peter Agre, the AAAS president and chair of the 2010 annual meeting program. But first, we would like to hear a few words from Dr. Marianne Fox. Dr. Fox is the chancellor and distinguished professor of chemistry at the University of California, San Diego. She and Dr. Erwin Jacobs, co-founder of Qualcomm, Inc. are the local co-chairs of this annual meeting. Unfortunately, Dr. Jacobs is unable to be with us this evening. This year, the University of California, San Diego, one of our nation's leading research universities, celebrates its 50th anniversary. And we're fortunate to have many of this year's universities outstanding scholars particularly uh, participating in various sessions throughout the meeting. Dr. Fox, the current chancellor, is a world-renowned chemist who has broad experience in science policy at national and state levels. She, serves the national, she has served on the National Science Board, the President's Council of Advisors in Science and Technology, is a member of the National Academy of Sciences, a fellow of the American Association for the Advancement of Science, the American Phil Philosophical Society, and a fellow of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences. It's my honor to welcome Dr. Fox, the seventh chancellor of UCSD, for a few remarks. Dr. Fox. Well, thank you so very much for joining us tonight. This is a fantastic opportunity to come together and to learn what science really is about. Uh, as was mentioned, I'm co-chairing this locally with Dr. Erwin Jacobs. He was, as you heard, unable to come tonight, but he's giving three presentations during the week, and I hope that you'll find those and uh, participate. He's a fantastic person, uh, responsible for a lot of the economic growth in this region. I should also mention that he is newly elected as a fellow of the AAAS, and uh, is very, very proud of that. So uh, please remind him if you attend that session. Jim McCarthy is an alumnus of UC San Diego, I'm proud to say. And so it's almost like a hometown reunion to have this meeting here in San Diego. The weather's okay, too, I think. <laughs> the theme of this year's meeting, Bridging Science and Society, fits well with the entire University of California system's mission of education, research, and public service. At UC San Diego and the other nine institutions in the University of California, we train tomorrow's skilled leaders. We provide advanced patient care and treatments. We improve people's lives, 
and we enhance our community as a whole. One of our main strengths, in fact, is innovative research, which is often translated into real-world applications, something that Erwin Jacobs has really excelled in. This makes the university a powerful magnet for state and federal funding. For example, UC San Diego brings in about a billion dollars each year in externally funded research. That places us about sixth in, among the top U.S. universities in federal research and development expenditure for the fiscal year 2008, the most recent one in which the National Science Foundation has released data. In addition, our researchers and faculty members have recently brought in over $110 million in federal stimulus money. So you can imagine that this results in a faculty who are using these resources very effectively, and it attracts top scholars from all over the world. Right now on our faculty here in San Diego, we have six Nobel laureates, six MacArthur Fellows, and five recipients of the National Medal of Science. So you've made a good choice in coming here to San Diego. You'll be able to see things that you couldn't believe would happen before. And of course, one of our strengths is having interdisciplinary work as a hallmark of the progress that we're making. We hope you'll take the time to see the California Institute for Telecommunications and Information Technology, Center for Interdisciplinary Science of Art, Architecture, and Archaeology, the Center for Research in Computation, and the San Diego Supercomputer, all available on the UCSD campus. Another example of this interdisciplinary work is the Sanford Consortium for Regenerative Medicine, in which UC San Diego is a leading partner, along with our other partners, the Scripps Research Institute, the Salk Institute, and the Sanford Burnham Institute. It's funded in part by a, a voter-approved California Institute Proposition 71, and part by philanthropy. So as we come together, know that you are more than welcome to participate in the active life of San Diego, a place where wireless technologies and biotechnologies have flourished because of this marriage of science and society. And on behalf of the students, the faculty, the staff of the University of California, and in particular the University of California at San Diego, we welcome you and hope you'll have a very good time while you're here. I know it'll be stimulating. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chancellor Fox. We are thrilled to be here. So it's now my pleasure to introduce uh, Peter Agre, uh, the president of the American Association for the Advancement of Science. Peter is the director of the Johns Hopkins Malaria Research Institute. In addition to being the program chair for our 2010 annual meeting, he also led the AAAS science diplomacy delegations to Cuba and North Korea over this past year. Peter shared the 2003 Nobel Prize in Chemistry with Roderick McKinnon of the Rockefeller University for the discovery of aquaporins, the key proteins that transport water across cell membranes. Not long after receiving the Nobel Prize, he began work to extend his studies of aquaporins and their relationship with malaria, addressing the question as to whether aquaporins could be exploited as a means of treating or preventing the disease. Peter is a member of the National Academy of Sciences chair of the Academy's Committee on Human Rights, a fellow of the American Association for the Advancement of Science, as well as the American Academy of Arts and Sciences. He received his first degree in chemistry from Augsburg College, his medical degree from Johns Hopkins University. Tonight, Peter will be speaking to us on the theme of this meeting, Bridging Science and Society, and it is my pleasure to present to you Dr. Peter Agre.